We are live. We are live. Hello and welcome to Tuesday's episode of For Evans Sake Daily. My name is Ni Odate Evans. And I'm Nana Evans. And we bring you the news from a parenting perspective. On today's show, we talk about the police officer who has admitted to being a serial abuser, the Brixton 02 license suspension, Jeremy Clarkson's apology, and Gemma Owens has a new boyfriend. And of course, not forgetting our parenting conundrums. Lovely. Um, so <sighs> Oh, this with, yes. This story is I don't even know where to begin. Mm. Like so the Met Police is currently investigating over a thousand uh sexual and domestic abuse claims involving around 800 officers and this is all off the back of one police officer uh called PC David Carrick who has pled guilty to over 49 offenses which happened over a span of two decades yeah. and 24 of those uh, involved the R word. Yes. Um, I, I don't even... <laughs> it's the whistle... Bl- it's actually... So his first victim came about during his probation. His, so his probation. He wow. had just started in 2003. And it's like there's a catalogue of abuses and people seeing slight things, women saying things as well that he had like pulled in, arrested inappropriate stuff and it had nobody had really followed up until one woman totally it's always that same story she would not let it go and then other people came forward and this is why he's on the dock now but it's there's there's a culture of just sweeping it under the carpet and it's it's weird what always really frustrates me with um cases like this when it involves the police is the way that there's a lot of the general public who the moment you talk against the police, mm. it's like, oh, uh, this is, you can't, you can't, you know, the, what would you do if your house got broken into? You'd call the police. We don't need to take the argument to those extremes or what have you. Well, like, they're false equivalencies anyway. Ab- ab- absolutely. And it's like, it, it doesn't change the fact that there are rotten eggs within the police force. And when these rotten eggs get found out, you can then not be oblivious to the fact that they needed to feel safe in that environment in order to do that. Mm-hmm. So that environment provided them with yes, the space and yeah. opportunity to be who they are. So it's not ludicrous to suggest that actually there's a lot more of these people yeah, residing that, within within the police force. And should we not actually be holding, because the authority that the police have, they should be held to a higher standard, not a lesser standard than the average man. His sentence probably isn't going to be the same as another person doing the same crimes, but he got away with it because of his authority. Yeah. So it's to me, it doesn't make sense. We should be punishing them more, not less. And if you want to send a message to people that this is absolutely not what the police force is about, you would be doing that as standard. Because obviously there there's not necessarily a way of telling who's a rotter and who's not when they're going into the police force. Mm. But when these people get found out, you absolutely have to double down on the sentences and the punishment to make sure the message that you're sending out to people is that we are a police force who does not and will not and will never ever tolerate this type of behavior. You would you would hope so. But again, if there is a culture of leniency and and really like depraved thoughts mm-hmm. and leaning into your power and abusing it, mm-hmm. this is what is shown. Yeah. Is when you let people off for doing bad right. things because they're in your gang, and and then obviously more more recently we had the issue with Sarah Everard, mm-hmm. and people then I, I can't remember what that man's nickname was. Derek Cousin, I think his name. But anyway, oh, it was had, like rapey something. Yeah, like he, he had some really like it was like oh come on, like, yeah. are you are you for real? And then also taking, I think it was the same year, actually, there were two police officers yes. who uh, shared pictures. pictures of the dead sisters, yep. uh, Bieber Henry and Nicole Smallman. And it's like, hang on, what else was being shared in that WhatsApp group? Well, because we only heard about the WhatsApp group, didn't we? Right. They and didn't go into what was being shared, but it was just, it was, there was inappropriate Because stuff. they had to be feel comfortable about sharing it in that group in the first exactly. place. Exactly. A whole load of police officers yeah. and ex-police officers together yeah. sharing materials. This is a thing. It's a culture. You you have to find your people. And if there's, I, I read a stat that actually it's like 92% of complaints get filed under there was no, that like, you know, there's, there's nothing to see yeah. here. Yeah. 
there and isn't any number, other that number industry should, should ring alarm bells exactly in the first place. There's no other industry that has that Which those is, stats, and that would suggest that it's not that oh the police are you know they're more likely to have complaints against the so. Mm most of them are false it actually should be we should have a really high standard yeah. and if anybody is falling short of that there needs to be swift reprimands in place like losing your job going to prison it shouldn't just be like oh you know slap on the wrist but also what that that number suggests it actually goes into contradiction to you so the assistant commissioner barbara gray she you know Put, a, put out a statement and in that statement she said we should have spotted this pattern of abuse behavior <laughs> because we didn't we missed opportunities to remove him from the organization and i think the reason why you haven't spotted it is very obvious is because you didn't want to spot it exactly. you know it, again referring back to that 92 percent if that there for anybody in any organization would be like hang on that that can't be reflective look how many complaints we've had in and all of that but if the police are policing themselves and they even when they say the independent, <laughs> we still know that it's the police policing themselves. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's shocking. Yeah. But that is 20 years on the job with lots of different colleagues. There is no way you was not displaying really very violent bullying, yeah. at least. Yeah. And then there's there's people that were in relationships with him who are now coming forward to be like it was a co it was a coercive abusive relationship. Yeah. There's loads of those, so you would be able to spot the signs. He he's not going to just do it in one area. He's yeah. probably manipulative and really toxic in loads of areas. It's it's just another example of how the police also operate as a gang. Mm. You know, because it's like essentially this person is one of us. You don't snitch. On, on one of your Two own. Two decades in one job for one is quite a long time, yeah. but the amount of people he would have come into contact with. It's interesting as well, going back to that thing of what we were saying about not being, these individuals who get found out, not being representative of the rest of the police force. It's funny how if you apply that to other sections of the society, of, of society, it immediately becomes yes, the opposite. Yes, exactly. But we don't need to get into that. We don't need to get into that. Um, so... At the end of last year, a really tragic event mm -hmm. occurred at the Brixton O2. Uh, so the Afrobeats artist Asake, Asaki? Asake? Asake. Uh, okay, him. Um, <laughs> he, was, he was performing at the venue and people were really excited to go down there. And, you know, there was, what the, what's the capacity of that? It's like 4,000 or something? Um, yeah, yeah, it's like 4,000. Yeah. And so there was about 1,000 people outside. Yeah. Um, and there was a crush and as a result, two people lost their lives. Um, it's just come out that, so when it happened, the license was suspended for three months. Yeah. Um, whilst obviously they're investigating all of this. Um, and now today Lambeth Council has said that it's going to be suspended for another three months while mm. they continue to, to look into all of this. Um, the owners of the Bricks and O2 AMG have said, you know, like they've also tried, you know, what makes me laugh in situations like this what is when you, you still try to save face. So they put out a statement ahead of this, knowing that it would get, yeah, yeah, yeah you would know. they were like, um, we are continuing our investigations and our doors will not be open for. Okay. Yeah. Cause and you it, know that the council would have. And I just think that's just wholly ridiculous. Um, but Something that really struck me at the time, just kind of going through my news feeds, having conversations with people, is, you know, in a situation like is a situation like this, everybody played their part in, in what happened. But it seemed like the responsibility was heavily on on the people that were outside. Even there was a report in the BBC, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous, where they actually wrote one onlooker said that they 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 thought that there was at least 500 people who didn't have a ticket and i'm yeah, like how yeah. do you look into a crowd and know oh they don't have tickets it's really strange but i think sometimes when people are reporting on events and there's lots of people if you think just even like from hillsborough it goes on the crowd yeah. being responsible well, for it yeah. than the organization i don't know why th that is where like the media seems to lean on is yeah. people. I, I have no idea why, because if you're in, a, even if you're watching a crowd, you can see how if it's effectively managed, 
as soon as it started to get a little bit busy, there should have been measures in place right. to, to actually hold off anybody getting close right. to the venue. The venue is super tight, small roads. It's not great in Brixton anyway. No, no. And the door staff It probably doesn't need dodgy. to be there. Well, so... Super dodgy. This brings me on to my next week because now, um, you know, again, this is kind of eyewitness reports or what have you, but security guards at Brixton Academy, so a witness has come forward or, or a whistleblower has come forward to the BBC saying how security guards at the Brixton Academy regularly took bribes yes. to let people in without tickets. Yes. <laughs> now, as people ourselves who've been involved in the events industry mm -hmm. for like over 10 years, that concept, and this is what I was trying to explain at the time when I was getting into some online conversations, is like, we know that in, much in the same way that people, you know, kind of hold up the police. Yeah. And it's like, we also know that there are security, that there are security guards that are amazing and whatnot have you, but we also know that there are some rotten ones there as well. Well, and it's on a door because you can take over the door and run it how you want to run it. So you need good people. Brixton Academy is known. It's run by gangsters. Mm -hmm. They run that door. So when this took place, it's like, yeah, you see it. You, you've already got to go there a couple of times and be, mm. you'll see the same people. Yeah. And you know, really good door management and you know when this is, we've taken yeah. over the door. And and then also, like, just the idea of taking bribes. This is something that's been happening in Clubland since forever. Yes. So I don't know why this would be a surprise to to anybody. Lambeth Council knows. They know. Everybody like, don't, knows. Don't, don't make this into a farce. Two people died. One One mother, she's left two sons. Like, this is a tragedy. That club needed to have been gone for years now or effectively really policed and, and that mm. door taken over. This was waiting to happen. It's, it's never great. If you go past Brixton when there's something going on at the academy, it's, it's pandemonium. Yeah. And it's not just door staff. It's on door staff and it's on police yeah. as well. Yeah. Because that area can get out of control very quickly and there's a police station that is like 500 yards down the road. And what's really frustrating is that the people, obviously nobody pays more than than the families of those who's, who've passed away, but the, the knock-on effect on this is that more black promoters in other areas of London are going to feel the knock-on effect of yes. this. Because it, again, it's an easy way, and I spoke about this on previous episodes of how organizations approach something rather than looking at something and, and, and realizing that it, it requires a nuanced approach. You just take your sledgehammer to it and go, boom. You know, again, I, I refer to the time of us doing events and we went through the, we saw the rise of the 696 form, mm. which was just a, a, a way to. It's racism. <laughs> yeah. it was just a I was trying to, to count my words, but yeah. It was yeah. a way to be prejudiced against black promoters mm. and just effectively wholesale penalize people because of one person may have trouble at their event and they happen to be black. So every other black promoter who is having a party in the same area gets penalized and your event could be canceled. It was just racism. It's just a, a way to stop a black economy from growing. And this is why things like this, when you see doors being run really bad, you know, that really does. It's not just that. It's not those promoters that were working with Brixton. It's going to be a whole load of people involved in working with venues and that are effectively being run by Lambeth Council, mm -hmm. the police. It has an effect on hundreds of people when one promoter does something wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we have, we felt the brunt of that. Mm -hmm. We felt the brunt of that. But we will we'll work to see another three months from now. Um, and you know, I, I predict that in a few months, like probably nearer to the summer, It'll it will back. open and so. it will be a very family friendly headlining act. Um, I'll be very surprised if there's ever another Afrobeats artist playing at Brixton. And then I think longer term that, that venue will be sold and we will see some more lovely little gentrified flats in Brixton. <laughs> <laughs> it's prime prime, prime land. space prime for, land. for like a um yeah a little block yeah you know it you know galliard homes man they're all, they're on they're on it already they're on it already um so jeremy clarkson he um was in the news recently for his article that he wrote 
uh, about Meghan Markle, which quite frankly, I don't even know how it was published in the first place. Um, he released a, a semi-apology at the time, kind of coming onto social media saying, oh, I seem to have caused a bit of a storm sort of thing. Um, and he's come back now and, and tried to double down on his apology. I And I use the word try uh, because you don't start an apology by talking about how in this day and age when people apologise, people don't accept apologies because already people are going to have their back up in terms of coming. Because now it's like we feel cajoled and forced into accepting your <laughs> apology because you've highlighted how people don't accept apologies. But then you then went on to make a really rubbish apology. And the idea that... The, the, you, the start of it was rubbish. It yeah, was terrible. You know, he so he emailed the couple on Christmas Day um, and, you know, he said his language had been disgraceful and he was profoundly sorry and all the rest of it. Um, but it's the idea that he wrote it in a rush and usually he has somebody check it and it wasn't checked. What? Short of saying this, it was in the sun? It was in the sun. Short of saying and the sun should have yeah. checked over as well. It was almost like, so they have this submissions where you submit it and it goes live. It, it's like he missed some steps, his own steps or whoever checks mm. over his work. But then the editor features like just that nobody checked this. It just went no, up like just, no. you know, raw. Like, no. it, and would it have been better if he had put the full thinking of Games of Thrones and what happened to Cersei Lannister? Like, would that who, have made it any better? Who needed him to write that as we if we didn't knew. know the reference? Yes, we, but it's like that was still an act of violence that took place on a woman. So you're saying that if you had put that film reference in there, that somehow would have detracted from you thinking that this woman needs violence, that it's a violent scene then. And it's, it's a violent scene. To, it's just a violent reference. Do you know what's interesting for me? Because of the Game of Thrones reference, and obviously Game of Thrones is massive in popular culture, I didn't even find that the most offensive thing that he said. I thought the most offensive thing that he said was that he thinks she's worse than Rose West. Yeah. Like Rose West, who's killed, I don't even know how many people. Like, and you think this woman is worse than her? Yeah, yeah. And you wrote that. And so you you say, oh, there was nobody to check it. But even as I say it out loud, surely as you write it, you write something, you'd be like, nah, come on, bro. That, 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 that's stupid, that's stupid. Like, Rose West. An, an apology to do an effective apology needs to really take some self accountability in every single part of that apology was blame on other people. Yeah. It's whoever checks wasn't there and I just sent it and it was live. And then it's people complaining against what I wrote is in effect losing me jobs. There's no, what I wrote was whole, it's just always it's other people other people if you don't do this if they if you stop talking about it if this one was checking my work it would all be fine well that that's the other thing because obviously his apology coincides with the announcement that amazon have dropped him mm. so even more so it's like why are we supposed to care about this non-apology this non-apology that you started off by saying it's mad how people don't accept apologies. <laughs> like, you know, my apology's lame and it's going to get backlash. So I'm going to get in front of that and say people never accept an apology. It was insincere. To, to the most, to the most. It was, and I think, um, I, d I didn't read it fully, but the Harry and Meghan's PR office responded and they were like, okay, but this isn't addressing the fact that this is part of a wider campaign of articles that you've written, which have been highly offensive. but It's just know. this one was the worst. Mm. They've been scaling up and this got the backlash. Yeah. You've been talking about them for a while. It's like, if you lose things, you lose things. They've lost their peace of mind. Yeah. They've had to move country. It's interesting how nobody thinks, I'm going to write these words. It's going to have an effect on somebody else. They're going to lose something from it. But if I am then held to account for my words, it's unacceptable it's, it's, that I should lose. Exactly. And, and this is the no problem that we've got with, with free speech. Because it's like, the line is very blurred now between free speech and hate speech. And, I, and I'm a strong believer of like, absolutely everybody is entitled to free speech. But also, 
there will be repercussions this for is your it. words. Free speech is not free from accountability. There you go. You have the freedom to say what you want to say. And then we have yeah. the freedom for you to be held account. There you go. And that's what he's finding out. And it's just, n nobody's accepting your apology because it's not real. And if it really was real, or you have somebody on your team who can write a really good, real apology, you should have had them do it. Yeah. Good luck to Jeremy. Good luck to Jeremy. Is anyone going to miss him? I'm not going to miss him. You know, the funny thing is, I grew up on Top Gear, right? I loved Top Gear. And this is, you know, watching the that uh, Jeremy and the rest of them, you didn't really, social media wasn't massive back yeah. then. So you didn't understand the person behind the... Yeah, yeah, you know. it's just a program. And so then as I got older and begin to kind of realise the, the kind of person he was, you're like, ugh. But I remember when Top Gear, like they were leaving Top Gear and I was like, oh man, that's that's a you're shame sad. because it was like, I grew up with that. These guys left. I have never watched an episode of their show <laughs> on Amazon ever. And I have Amazon Prime. Yeah. Like I could watch it, but I have never felt inclined to watch them. And it's like, once you're gone from like the popular view, you're, you're really not that missed. You're yeah. not missed. You're no. not missed. And I think Amazon know it as well. They probably, the thing is, Amazon probably looked at the numbers and they were like, they'd probably the juice be, isn't worth the They've squeeze. probably been waiting yeah. for this dude to slip up so that they could end a contract. There you go. Because it was like, you just sometimes chuck, it gets like that. Chucking millions at these old men who, for, yeah, anyway, let me not, let me yeah. not. <laughs> um, in, in slightly more lighthearted news, so, Love Island returned last night. You're yes. very happy. Yeah, uh, yeah. And also, yeah. Uh, if you follow Nana and and the aunties, you know that their live chats have returned as well. We after. are back on the ground. Good Lord, help <laughs> us all. Um, but I noticed in in the news today, uh, Gemma Owen, who is the daughter of Michael Owen. The footballer. Um, the footballer, Michael Owen. We don't need to highlight who Michael Owen is. People know who Michael Owen is. I, he, he said himself, there's a whole generation of people that just call him Gemma's dad. Libby, absolute Libby. What's she done? Anyway, so Gemma, um, obviously she was a past Love Island contestant and she was paired up with... Luca Bish. Yeah, he was a fishmonger. Yes. Uh, Luca Bish and the fish. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't go too well. Uh, they broke up and she is now uh, with a new man. Mm -hmm. uh, and that man is rapper and actor, yes. Bugsy Malone. Yes. Uh, real name, Aaron Davies. Um, now the thing is, Gemma's 19. Why do we bring this news to you? <laughs> it's what some people are thinking. Why are they talking about this? Gemma's 19. Bugsy's 32. I'm wondering, is age, is age a thing? Like, age gap, is that a thing anymore? I don't know. Because to me, I'm Gemma like... Gemma had that. If I was Michael, I wouldn't be comfortable with this. Well, Gemma had this, this conversation around her and her dating publicly very young mm. when she went into Love Island. Because, yes, she's probably going to be turning 20 soon. But when she got into Love Island in the summer, it's like she had just turned yeah. 19. And there was a lot of speculation. She was the youngest in the house that publicly you would be going on a dating show so young and you're talking about ex-partners and you started dating from like 15 with slightly older men. And there was a lot of discussion around that. Like, is this appropriate? Is this setting a standard for other women? Because now she is an influencer mm -hmm. um, for other, yeah, young women. Um, and men, you know, because... Yeah, I, I and think... is this okay that there's this, you know, she's young. Yeah, she, she is. is young, but is seen as like a very attractive to older men as well. Yeah. And... Mm, I'm, it's, I it's, think it's a slippery slope. I think it's... It's giving Diddy and Laurie Harvey... It's definitely that. And if you think of like um, page three models, it feels very 80s, mm. like that young woman kind of being thrust in front of yeah, the public. Yeah, like yeah. it's okay yeah. to lust over that young girl. We had kind of moved away from mm, that for mm, a time, mm -hmm. for a few decades. And yeah, I'm I'm not comfortable with it. And as parents, I I don't know. I wouldn't be okay with this. Oh uh, yeah, I absolutely wouldn't be. And and I, I mentioned as well, like I just think so you said about how young she had started dating 15, 18, and oftentimes we have double standards for girls and boys. Mm. But I actually think if if she was a boy as well, like it, it's still it's it's not acceptable. Like it's, it's I think it's slightly different though, with in, the the level of influence and 
naivete. So it's like the, an older man having influence and yeah, more I power. See I see that. Usually more means. Yeah. It can really skew how you view, you yeah. know, partners, dating, and, and you're more susceptible to abuse as well. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily translate on the other way no, to, to No, a, yeah, to I, I agree with that. I think I was more just kind of like, it's not acceptable for boys to start dating that young as well. But... I, I get it, I get yeah. it. But uh, yeah, the da- I think the dangers are definitely more yeah. skewed in yeah. favour of, of yeah. women to actually like hold off. But it, also, it's, you know, within your family, however it's policed, it's one thing. But I think once it goes on TV... And you're in this realm with like, you know, you've now become a celebrity and you're so young. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised at how private I thought the Owens were. Yeah. That this yeah, is This happened. is even a thing. I'm like, that's really kind of shocking to me, actually. So let us know in the comments, is age, are age gaps a thing anymore? Um, ha- would you feel comfortable uh, as Gemma's parents, you know, with this, this age gap between mm. the two of them. Uh, let us know your thoughts. 19 and 32. 19, As a 32 yeah. year old man. I don't know what the interest is. I like is. Bugsy Malone. I like, I think, it's, the, the, you know, like <laughs> I like Bugsy, but, and this, yeah, this I to just, me is a to little, me, I don't, I don't, look. It's I, a little creepy. <laughs> we don't know the girl. We don't know the girl, but what I'm saying is I would struggle to find common ground, but, you know, as Aaliyah said, but maybe Aaliyah is not Aaliyah the greatest example. Not the <laughs> one to let's, talk. Let's, <laughs> and on that note, we will move on to our parenting conundrum. Yeah, that's kind of two parenting because that is a parenting conundrum yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. So let us know what you think of that. Um, we won't spend too long on this one. So yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a brief one. So a woman and her husband, husband has a child from a previous relationship. That child is 10 years old. That 10 year old boy has lives with his mum and has half siblings yeah okay now for some reason the mum requires that when the husband takes his son that some of the siblings at least one of the siblings must come along as well okay okay bit weird but anyway so anyway the issue is the son has come along who's 10 he's brought his half sibling who's 13 and the wife has taken them out for dinner um and noted how the 13 year old didn't say thank you or anything like that. Right. Brought them back to the house. They've kind of done what they did. Husband had to go to work. So she's dropped the 13 year old back. Like taking the yeah, kids back. back. Yeah. Again, no thanks, no nothing. All a bit rude. Following day, he's back at the house again. Same thing. And so this time around, she says to the husband, look, I'm not feeling the way that this kid is really unappreciative. Um, next time he comes back, I'm just not going to be around because I can't, I can't be around this. Husband says that she's overreacting. She's being out of order. And so she's written right to find out, is she being out of order? Being out of order. Yes. I think she is. I think she is being. Does, doesn't she deserve some respect? Of course she would deserve respect, but she's been very immature in her solution for the disrespect. Removing yourself as the adult yeah, okay, 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 from okay. the situation to me is folly. <laughs> yeah no you know it's like <laughs> not gonna lie not gonna lie didn't really didn't really think about that angle didn't really think about that like, angle I'm like so I'm not gonna be around I, if yeah. I was a husband too I'd be like are you their age yeah you know it's, it's <laughs> funny because now I think about it and I think about it from a cultural lens like that the first time that child didn't say thank you uh, you would have got pulled straight away yeah, yeah. Uh, but even if you was a bit like oh maybe I missed that and then you're seeing the pattern of it throughout the couple of days that you was together. You speak to your husband about it and be like, we have to, st- we, we either speak to this boy mm-hmm. about what we expect in terms of manners and gratitude. If he's like, mm, not my child, da, 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 we have to speak to then your ex-wife, this sibling, if they're coming into our house, they are respectful to every member because we're, we're looking after them. And if, there isn't any yeah. cohesive, the, okay, mm. I'm going to speak to him or let's speak to him together. If there's none of that and she, and you get pushed back from that parent, we're only looking after my child oh, now. Yeah. And See, that's it. I was like, n- now you said that, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm talking to the child directly because I'm not even doing the thing of talking to my husband. Da, 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 because if the wife, the ex-wife feels like it's okay for this child to tag along in the first, like not even that it's okay, like this child must, a sibling yeah. must tag along then I will 
reprimand this yeah, child. Yeah, I'm going to treat... Well, I'm treating you all the same. same yeah. So, but... Obviously, she's displayed slightly immature yes, tactics. Uh, so very. Let's yeah. let's go with maybe she doesn't have the words, the vocabulary, the emotional range to be authoritative. Or she with just, these, she's just a idiot. There's there's that there's too. That. There's but that as too. the man, it's not like oh you're just being. It's take this family in hand and make sure that everybody is happy. Agreed to some way. Or this child who is causing disharmony in your home and it's not actually your biological yeah. child Madness. can only come around on birthdays yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stupid on that note <laughs> that has been Tuesdays for Evan's Sake Daily thank you for watching once again thank you um, and we really appreciate you also make sure you follow us on socials for Evan's please like this Evan's video Sake, yeah. please subscribe please share like we really need you yeah, guys absolutely. that are watching us to participate so that we grow yeah. and more people see us. It really does help. The more likes we get, you sharing it. If you're in if you're in any kind of Reddit forums where you're allowed to share, please share it there. If you're on Twitter, please share it on Twitter. If you're on Facebook, please share it to your Facebook page. It really means a lot to us. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. <laughs>